34 yard line. That uh, drive, that USC drive, they put 10 plays up. It's only seven plays in 80 yards for USC. Made a mistake up in the press box. Here is Green taking off. Good fake. Look at him run. Quick, quick feet to change direction. This to the 29 of USC. Again, Danny Reese brought him down. A sophomore from Wilmington, California. Five yard gain for Cornelius Green. Second down, five to go. Ohio State racing the clock now. Two minutes, 10 seconds to go in the half. USC's ahead 14 to seven. Ohio State with a one or two this game. Green, Archie Griffin, and he pounds to the 25, maybe the 24. Let's see when they unscramble. James Sims, number 41, and number 50, Kevin Bruce, the linebacker. Now, Kevin Bruce went into the football game for number 83, Rich Wood. He's going out, Rich Wood coming back in, the All-American. They have third down and a half yard to go. The time, a minute 35. There's a first down and more. Archie Griffin is to the seven yard line. He's explosive, isn't he? He breaks tackles. You cannot hit him high. He'll slide off tackles if you hit him high. Oh, that's right. They go at the Roll American. John Hicks led up in there. Fine block on Sims. They pay full backs to block. They pay deep backs to run. Griffin can run. First down and goal to go. And inside the five. And down to the two yard line is Archie Griffin. Artemis Parker tackles him. There's a minute and 11 seconds to play and Ohio State stops the clock with a timeout. Timeout with a score, 14 to seven USC. You know, both these teams took two timeouts in the first period. Ohio State now is out of timeout. Minute 11 to go, first and goal on the two yard line. Green to Pete Johnson, the fullback. And he's stopped there by Charles Anthony. The ball's on the one yard line, the clock is moving. Second down, a yard to go. A third and a yard now. Third and a yard. Wait a minute, they blew the whistle. Fifty-one seconds remaining. Timeout, Southern California. Southern California wanted timeout. They stopped the clock, and why, I don't know, unless they figured they weren't set. And that's there. This day right now, today is our 25th anniversary of station KPRC, our NBC affiliate in Houston, Texas. A happy 25th anniversary. Cornelius Green, talking to Woody Hayes. Ohio State has been excellent today in converting third down plays, five out of eight. He also puts in that Big John Smurder also as a tight end just to get as much blocking into that offense as possible. All right, the clock will start moving with a snap third and a yard to go for an Ohio State touchdown. USC's ahead 14 to 7. And Pete Johnson's over the fullback, the freshman fullback. Bashnagel was in front of him, leading the way. Number 48, a freshman has scored two touchdowns in the Rose Bowl. Here it is again. You know where we're coming. We've said it before. Number 33. And he's got a lot of years ahead of him. What a backfield that's going to be, huh? Or is. Well, Ohio State drove from their 30-yard line. They've had two drives now of 80 and 70 yards. Blair Conway for the point. It is up, it is deflected, and it is, is blocked by Charles Phillips. Charlie Phillips deflected it off to the left, and Ohio State went up there and over after the deflection. It still made it. You very rarely see that. 
Charlie Phillips hit the ball, deflected it up in the air, and had just cleared the crossbar. So it's a tie game, 14 to 14. 12 plays, 70 yards for Ohio State. I want to remind you that Saturday, January 12th, we'll have the this 25th anniversary of the North-South Senior Bowl, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Well, Ohio State will take that point for the assistance of linebacker Charlie Phillips of USC. Blair Conway kicks a low line drive, grabbed by Alan Carter on the five. Out to the 20, 25, east to the 30-yard line. First down, USC on their 30. The tackle by Bruce Rule, number 43. All right, now you've got that situation. Not much time to go. You've got a Lynn Swan in the game. You've got a J.K. McKay. You've got that opportunity to go deep, short patterns. He can do it all. Hayden, we've seen him under pressure. Tremendous amount of poise. Game is figured out. Ohio State power, ball control power, USC wide open stuff, lots of passing. A tie game, 14-14. There's a screen to Lynn Swan, trying to get away, and he's taken for a yard loss. They had that one diagnosed. Gratishar's over there, Decree, 88, the end. Rick Middleton, number 32. Arnie Jones, the tackle, 42, all around Lynn Swan. That's a loss of a yard, a second down, 11 for USC. And on that set, they took both J.K. McKay and Lynn Swan, put them to one side. Now, you know Ohio State is going to be playing Lynn Swan deep. So you might look for that other man, the man with a little bit less speed, to take it underneath the zone, 25 McKay. Second down, 11 for the Trojans. Rod McNeil. Brought down on his 33-yard line by Arnie Jones, the left tackle of Ohio State. Lock is moving now. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Quick lineup by USC. They have a third down and seven. Again, they run the ball. Rob McNeil is to his 40-yard line. He may have the first down. Rick Middleton and Vic Cagle tackle him there. And it is a first down, so they stop the clock. Nine seconds remaining in the half. All right, to wind the clock up. Hayden keeping the ball and running it out of bounds. Pushed out by Van Decree, and he really pushed him out. And the USC is unhappy with that one. The Trojans come off the bench. They were standing right there. As a flag down, Hayden was trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock, and he was given a forceful push out by Van Decree number 88, and the Trojan fans are booing. And the Trojan fans then became irate. Decree's been playing very well. He's 6'1", he's only 215 pounds. He played an earlier screen well. May not have played this quite too well. Hayden was just trying to waltz out of bounds leisurely, and he winds up under the bench. Two seconds to go. And they're still booing Dupree and Ohio State. Of course, remember, this across the way is a hometown USC fan. Now the penalty of 15 yards goes against Ohio State. Puts the ball on the USC, 49. Personal foul against Ohio State's degree. You know, it's kind of hard to really explain the intensity or try to understand the intensity of a player like Decree. Coming in here so hepped up for this football game, made it, I'm sure now he, he regrets it. Whistle blows. The officials call for the time. And Randall now is in as a flanker wide. This will be the last play of the half. It's to Rod McNeil. And he's stopped, and the clock shows time is out for the first half. Rick Middleton, 32, made the final tackle of the first half. Well, look at that score. 
expected to be a dead even game and that's just what it is. USC 14, Ohio State 14 at the end of the first half. Now we're ready for the always colorful halftime activities of the Rose Bowl. We've got a tie game 14 to 14. So sit back and enjoy the USC Trojan marching band. Space exploration has been greatly reduced. Watch as the band dances to their version of Space Race. our energy consumption. The fans suggest we cut out gas guzzling automobiles and take a free ride on our good old two-wheeler. such as solar energy. The band looks at this alternative through a precision drill to you are the sunshine of my life.
final USC Trojan band number to be played by that group, the Tower of Power. Very hard to go, the title of the song. Here they are, the Tower of Power. Time activities will continue in a moment. Right now, we pause for station identification. This 1974 Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Texaco and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. By your Dodge dealer, who brings you three cars in one, Dart Sport Convert Triple, and by Goodyear, makers of the custom Steel Guard radial tire. And as the tie at halftime, 14-14, Let's listen now to the famous Ohio State Buckeye marching band. Time of your life is playing America's favorite game show, Beat the Clock. Our contestants have 58 seconds to play the minute waltz. Ready? Start the clock. <laughs>
Stop the clock. Terrific. for having the time of your life includes the largest brass band in the world and the music of Jimmy Webb. It all comes together in the band's dynamic version of MacArthur Park. The most spectacular formation in college band history belongs to the Ohio State University Marching Band. This time-honored tradition is performed for the seventh time in the Rose Bowl, the incomparable Script Ohio.
And Ohio State's famous script march. There's the halftime score. Ohio State 14, USC 14, as we get ready for the second half kickoff in the 1974 Rose. Well, there are the stats. As expected, Ohio State leading in rushing. But in passing, the other way around is expected, USC. USC has 30 yards difference in total offense. Pat Hayden's hit 11 out of 19. Three out of five for Cornelius Green. The leading rusher has been Anthony Davis, 29 yards for USC. And the top rusher in the game for Ohio State, Archie Griffin, was 64. Actually, it was 11 of 18, but that other one pass was that play-action pass, shall we call. Anthony Davis threw one pass to J.K. McKay for a touchdown. And an error-free game almost, Al. Right. Only one turnover. That was against Ohio State, who threw a pass interception. Neither team has bubbled, and only two penalties on each team. So they're both executing in high fashion in this first half. Ohio State's going to receive. And Lee Mahalu is going to kick off instead of Anthony Davis. Back deep will be Bash Nagel at the top of your screen. Archie Griffin's in the middle. And at the bottom, Morris Bradshaw. Lee Mahalu's kick. There's a squibbler. Bumble around at the 20 yard line. Picked up by Bashnagel. And he's dropped right at the 22. Manfred Moore. Manfred Moore, we've been waiting for him. He's right at the kicker. He's also the fullback. And they say he's great on special teams. No one blocks him at all on this. He goes directly to his man. Oh. He's made about 50% of the USC tackles on kickoffs this year. Cornelius Green brings him up. Archie Griffin. Ilya is the fullback. And over the 25, out to the 26-yard line, Archie Griffin. Stopped by James Sims. Well, if Griffin keeps rolling the way he did in the first half, he'll have his 11th 100-yard game of succession, Al. You're right, and you know, they keep hitting that slot. They're running against what looks like a 5-3. They're trying to isolate that one defensive tackle block on him and cross on 72. They spread Hazel right in front of you, out to the right. Now they give the ball off to Elia. Bruce Elia, the fullback. Running that fullback up the middle, Artemis Parker, the safety man, stopped him. On the 32-yard line, they look to that far sideline, and it's going to be third down and a short yard to go for Ohio State. And I'll tell you who's impressed me the first half. Number 52, the center, Steve Myers. He's blocking one-on-one -on, -one on Monty Darvis, Doris, and that's a big job. All right, they have the double tight end set up. And coming through with the ball is that freshman fullback. Pete Johnson again. Pete Johnson broke that one on a quick hitter. He was just going for the first down, and he had to be pulled down from behind by Marvin Cobb. And can he run for 236 pounds? All right, now the linebacker has to do a big job, and he's going to get pushed out of this play. That's Bashnagel. The man cuts beautifully. Now let's take another look. Bashnagel leads it, blocks on Rich Wood. You know, once you break that tight defensive coverage, this man could have gone all the way. Boy, and we important. just had a broken play here for Ohio State. Illegal procedure. The right tackle, Hicks, jumped. And that's a five-yard penalty, which puts the ball back on the 36-yard line of Southern Cal. Gives Ohio State a first and 15. Well, they move it back to the 37 the five and a half yard penalty 14 to 14 a tie game we just opened the third period Bruce Ely is back in at fullback 36 and there is the inside reverse to Brian Bashnagel who takes the ball from the flanker spot and cuts inside number 48 Gary Jeter 
the freshman tackle from Cleveland, Ohio, whose stepfather and John Hicks's mother both work in the same hospital. John Hicks, the right tackle, is Jeter's idol, and he's playing opposite him today. Second down now, 10 to go, a fake. Green keeps the ball. His pass is to Pudgick, the tight end. A diving grab by Puggich on the 14-yard line. Red Puggich takes that one. A fake to Bashnagel. Watch Bashnagel come across. And when a man can run, you've got to respect it. Bashnagel's moved to the inside, pulls the linebacker. Green fires. Beats the All-American, really, Artemis Parker. And Puggich has been important. Well, that's four out of six passes for Cornelius Green. Fumble, the dive. First fumble of the game. Archie Griffin had the ball darn loose. Down there, number 72, Monty Doris with it. The nose guard. And Ohio State has its second turnover. And the first time either team has lost the ball via the fumble. What a fight's been going on inside. We've been talking about it. There's the pop right there. Monty Doris, number 72, recovers. Big fight. Monty Doris recovers it. Marvin Battle created it. All right, the Trojans first down on their 16. They're tied 14 all. 12.46 to go in the third quarter. Running the slot. And Anthony Davis is down on his 19-yard line. He's hit there by 71, Pete Cusick, the right tackle, and by Rick Middleton, the close side linebacker. And really, the difference of these two running attacks right now is the fullback. We know Hayden can outpass the young man, although Cornelius Green is throwing well, but it's the fullback. We haven't really seen Manfred Moore except for two carries. Rod McNeil's a tailback. He's 25 pounds heavier than Davis. But Hayden steps up. Out of that pocket he comes. Not much. He's down on his 18-yard line by Pete Cusick. Now they're, they're preventing him from stepping into the pocket and coming out of it. They contain him from getting outside. And now they've stopped him from that big yardage. There's a look at USC's third down play so far. Four out of seven, a high ratio. Davis is back in a tailback. Neil, Col Neil Colsey Kurt is going to be playing Swan very tight. J.K. McKay, Swan on the same side. Hayden fires down the middle, and what a catch by Swan. He went down with his knees, I'm sure, on the 36. Both knees touched the ground there at the USC 36, but it's still good for a first down. Swan arguing. He's going to lose the argument. Randy Gratishar on him. They put Swan inside very wisely. Neil Colsey played J.K. McKay. Swan hits to the inside. He fires. It's an unusual stride that Pat Hayden has, but it was a perfect strike. Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan has caught his fourth pass of the game. He's the leader in the Pac-8 this year with 37. He's the all-time leader now in USC pass-receiving history. And for more, the fullback. He came into this game tied with Rod Sherman, 91 catches in a career. But he's caught four today, so he is the all-time pass-receiving king of USC football. Cagle and Middleton on that last tackle. Ball's on the 38-yard line of USC. A second down seven. The game is tied 14 all. 10.35 to go in the third period. That's right. And yet, Kurt, we're waiting for the quick burst by the fullback. That's where the bubble is, straight up. On motion is Davis. And for more, that's hard running by the senior from San Fernando, California was used most of the time as a blocker. Randy Gratishar, the All-American linebacker, brought him down, helped by Vic Cagle. The ball now is on the 46-yard line of USC. A Trojan first down. One of the things McKay said was that Sam Cunningham's leaving was a big loss. Well, they haven't used Manfred Moore. I'll tell you, he looks like he can run and run well. 18 first downs for USC. Swan in motion. Now Hayden. Oh, that was nearly 
grabbed off by Vic Cagle. Right in his arms, a bullet pass. And he had a wide open field down that far sideline. He's a middle linebacker. Number 78 is Steve Riley. Number 71 is Pete Cusick. You keep your feet when you're blocking. The tackle tries to make a roll. Perfect position. That's school book type blocking. Second down, 10, USC. John McKay diagramming a play in his mind. They put Swan in motion again. Here's a draw play. Anthony Davis to the 45, 40, stops at the 39 of Ohio State. And a tackle by Neil Colsey, number 20. Well, they know where the bubble is. Here it is again. Perfect call. You set up to the outside. You have a fullback lead draw. Anthony Davis now has 46 yards in the ground. Where you go, AD? And the Trojans have their 19th first down, the 13th for Ohio State. A game is tied, 14-14, 9-20 to play in the third period. McNeil the tailback. Hayden's hit 11 out of 20. He hands it off to Manson Moore. Manson Moore on the fullback draw is to the 33-yard line. That starts out as a rollout. Roll out right, and he slips it off to his fullback. That's two draw plays in a row for USC. One to the tailback, one to the fullback. And Davis checks back into the huddle, replacing McNeil. Second down, four to go. USC on Ohio State's 33. Both Swan and McKay are in a slot left. Hayden, a deep set. He unloads the Swan. Oh, he uh, let him too much with that pass. Swan had a step on Cagle and Middleton. Now, that, there was a coach's dream to get a fleet receiver and two big linebackers covering. But that was a pass that just a little too far ahead of Lynn Swan. We've been pointing out how the middle of the defense has been playing. Vic Cagle is number 62. He's playing somewhat off the line of scrimmage. Artie Jones, 42, plays to the outside. Pete Cusick also to the outside. Vic Cagle either comes or he drops back. Look for it there. McNeil's the tailback. More ahead of him. McNeil to the 30, to the 29, maybe the 28. Rich Parsons, the safety man, came up. Radishar, the linebacker, 53 on that tackle. And again, USC has a first down, number 20 for USC. Once again, other than the passing attack, Hayden just a different type passer than Green. They're mirroring each other, both defensively and the running attack. 14-14, uh, it was, and it is rather, and you can see why. Ken Kuhn replaces Gratishar, the open field linebacker. Swan in motion. The pitch to Davis. 30, 25, 20. Cut back. Out of bounds. Stepped out on the nine. The blocking by Moore. The gave the tackle by Fox that saved the touchdown. Watch the blocking now, especially by 44. That's what made it work. He hit Steve Luke. Breaks it to the outside, and the fancy stepping. Boy, he's got those quick feet. Watch him tightrope walk this sideline. This takes quick feet. Look at him. On his toes, dancing down that sideline, and Fox drove him out. First down, goal to go. Radishar back in. Neal's the tailback. He has the ball. And the ball flies around, and it is recovered by USC. That ball flew up in the air. He was hit so hard and bounced to the one-yard line. Falling on the ball is Manfred Moore, number 44. He was hit so hard. That, watch the ball pop up here, Al. Let's see this again now. It was almost the identical play to the one you saw a moment ago. Middleton is moving over. Manfred Moore is leading. There's the ball. It really pops up. That's Parsons that hit him. That's so high it went out of our picture. And now, there's Manfred Moore 
passing on it. What a play. It went for seven yards. Second down, two to go for a touchdown. Anthony Davis trying to dive for it. He stopped on the one-yard line. Third and a yard to go for a USC touchdown that could put them out in front in a 14-14 tie. Just under seven minutes to play in the third quarter. And you remember last year, Slam, Bam, Cunningham used to make that same kind of dive. Four times he dived over last year. Most valuable player of the game. You know, back in 1919, the player of the game award went to George Hallis of the Great Lakes team. Slot left. And it's a touchdown for Anthony Davis. Davis is over. On his side, he was over. But Middleton tried to stop him up in the air. Let's get some different angles on this. Up in the air goes the little man and hit pretty well in there, but he got it in just enough. Here's another angle. There's Middleton, 32. Now watch 46 hit him. Now Al on the ground. On the ground. Now they're really going to come. Steve Luke pops him pretty good, but he got the ball over. And there's the kick. The kick is good by Lima Halu. And USC has moved out in front now by a score of 20. Program note, NBC begins its coverage of 15 regular season NHL contests this week when the Rangers host the Boston Bruins. Tim Ryan, Ted Lindsay, Brian McFarland bring you all the action. Friday at 8.30 Eastern time. And it's a short kick. Picked up there on the 30-yard line and brought back to the 33-yard line. And it was picked up there by number 77, who's a lineman, and he is Doug France, Dayton, Ohio. One of his rare chances to lug the ball. Well, that last drive by USC was a beauty. There it is. That's the dope on it. 14 plays, 624, 86 yards, 84 yards, and Davis took it over. Alice of Ohio State comes back. They give the ball to Archie Griffin, and Griffin gets straight ahead to his 40. Oh, he can really find that opening inside. I saw a flag go down when he started to the line of scrimmage. They've had very few penalties. Two penalties on each team in the first half. And that's going against Ohio State. That's holding 15 yards. Interestingly enough, the second leading rusher on the team, Cornelius Green, has not done much of that at all that is running and he can run he has not tried to exploit the outside because of the speed of the USC linebackers principally first down 22 yards to go Pete Johnson back in at fullback and he stopped and he's 37. Now, the Ohio State bench is unhappy. Ted Roberson, number 47, and Dale Mitchell teamed up to stop him. 48, come on, let's go. Let's get a drive going of our own. Now the officials are going to mark one off. And this is 15 yards against USC. A personal foul. Tag after the 16-yard run by Cornelius Green. Here's a replay of this. That's Pete Johnson leading in. He's in there at fullback. Good fake. Got that good there it is. quick stride. That's right it. there. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. A late hit on the sideline. First of foul. You know, with Pete Johnson in there, he has really impressed. A fullback, they're playing it a little tighter. Sometimes they get Archie Griffin deep, sometimes tight. They're awfully close. It looks like a handoff to Johnson. Johnson gained 75 yards as a freshman. Archie Griffin is to the 43-yard line. Tackled by Richard Wood. 
While we untangle, we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. I can't see you. Archie Griffin, by the way, has now gained the most yards in any sing a single season for a Big Ten player. Green again. Going on the run. Huggies! Red Huggies to tight end. Who says Cornelius Green can pass? He laid that one in there beautifully on the run doing a perfect pass as he dropped it over his shoulder. And what a day Puggage is having. Danny Reese will come over eventually. Gets plenty of time. That rollout helps. It moves the pocket. Fires on the move. Perfect pass, Al. That sure was. Beautiful. First and goal to go. Ohio State on the USC 4. USC at 21-14. The old straight T. There goes Johnson. Three touchdowns for a freshman. Three touchdowns for an 18 year old freshman Pete Johnson Long Beach New York here's a ground level shot you want to see a hole that is a hole now Kurt you could have carried that in I believe so I might have been able to let's take a look at it again what blocking he's running behind John Hicks and he just waltzes in Bash Nagel will spot it for Blair Conway And that kick is blocked again by Charlie Phillips. He blocked one over the crossbar, but he blocked that one, and USC keeps the lead. USC 21, Ohio State 20. Number 49, Watch the right side of your screen. Here's Charlie Phillips coming on, getting in there, and boom, he blocks the extra point to maintain a one-point lead for USC. A 79-yard drive for Ohio State in three plays. Blair Conway is kicking off. Anthony Davis is calling for it on the five. He's out to the 20. And he's down to the 28-yard line. Steve Luke is down there. And Bruce Rule. The attendance today, 105,267. Weekend of January 19th to 20th, NBC will present on Saturday round three of the Dean Martin Tucson Open, the AFC NFC Pro Bowl game, the Marrowhead Stadium in Kansas City at two o'clock Eastern time, followed by the final round of the Dean Martin Tucson Open on Sunday. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Southern Cal's ball on their 28 yard line with a first down. Flags go down. I think Obradovich moved that time. That's it. He moved the tight end. The legal procedure. Go back to the Trojan 23. First and 15. That last drive. Three plays, 79 yards for Ohio State. And the pass has been an important weapon today for Ohio State. Puggage has caught four passes for 89 yards. He caught five all season. He's caught four in one game. And he's been the leading pass receiver all year with only five catches. Davis nearly has his head taken off by Nick Bonamici. He's now in there at left tackle, number 75. On the 26-yard line of USC, they have a second down 12. McNeil checks in at tailback. And Cornelius Green has completed five out of seven today for 104 yards. He had completed only 36% of his passes coming into this game. Hayden pass. And the receiver, Obradovich, had his back to the play. Hayden says, what happened? Turn around, look for the ball. Third down, 12. USC on their 26. They're leading 21 to 20. Just over four minutes to play in the third period. And on that play, they had Rod McNeil wide open to that side. Rod McNeil went out. It looks like Anthony Davis has come back in. They may repeat. I, I rarely see them throw to Anthony Davis. 
Now we have the third string tailback in, Alan Carter, number 21. Okay. Passing play. Hayden out of the pocket. He throws. Good. Out of the reach of Obadovich to tight end. And I believe he ran across the line of scrimmage. I think Pat Hayden crossed the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. You saw, I saw, just saw a flag go down. That's it. An illegal forward pass. Again, the zone drop. He's trying to capitalize on it. Beautiful disciplined zone. The short zone, the deep zones. That's the pass, but he was definitely beyond the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal forward pass. The loss of the down, a penalty of five yards. Jim Lucas will punt now. And Neil Colsey is deep. Here's a kid that's averaged 17 yards of punt return. The best punt returner in the history of Ohio State. Oh, he just got it away. Colsey fields the ball at his 35. It's up to the 40, 45, 50, 40. He could break this one. 25, 20. And they bring him down inside the 10. Neil Colsey, what a punt returner. He has four touchdowns this year, two on interception, two on punt return. And he almost does this. There's the seam. Neil Colsey, the position of the great punt returners. Actually, Pat Hayden helped make that play because he forced it back to the inside. Well, well, they take a breather after that 57-yard return by Neil Colsey. There's your score, 21-20 USC. Kurt Gowdy, L.D. Rogatis, Ohio State now on the eight-and-a-half-yard line of Southern Cal. And fucking again is Pete Johnson, the fullback, the freshman, having... A day that a freshman would dream about. Number one, how many freshmen ever get to play in a Rose Bowl? Number two, how many score three touchdowns in a Rose Bowl game? And he has now carried the ball today 16 times for 82 yards. Second down, four to go for an Ohio State touchdown. And Johnson this time, look at the power of that kid. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. We told you he carried three Michigan players over five yards away. And that time, he blasted forward to about the yard and a half line. Watch his power, Al. Jim Cagle blocking in front of him. Kurt Schumacher blocking there. And here's the power. Rich Wood makes what looks like a perfect tackle. And yet he fights on. Third down now and a yard and a half to go for an Ohio State touchdown. That could put them out in front. And he is stopped. That time they stop him. USC, really. Charles Anthony, number 55. Oh, Eddie Pye. And down at the bottom of that pile. Number 79, the freshman, Gary Jeter. Watch it again. Here it is again, and he is popped. The most points scored in the Rose Bowl game, we did it last year. He doesn't get in. Sam Cunningham did it with 24, and he's close. Pete Johnson. And Ohio State has called a timeout. They have fourth down and a yard to go for a touchdown. They're trailing 21-20. Number 55 is Charles Anthony of USC. Over on the sideline talking to his defensive coach. Here's the Ohio State band in their stand. All right, we saw one of the biggest holes I have ever seen on a goal line or on any line. The last touchdown Pete Johnson made. He ran at his All-American tackle. He's trying just about every hole. They're continuing to pop their big gun in there. There's Woody Hayes talking to his people. Cornelius Green back in. That hole was to the right side before. I wonder if they'll come back there. All right, Ohio State up. Fourth down and a yard to go for a touchdown. They're asking the crowd to quiet down. Everybody in a Rose Bowl now coming up on their feet. 105,000 here today. 
They want to see this goal line play. I'm not going to say this is the play of the game because every time one team scores, the other club comes right back and puts on a magnificent march. This is going to be one of the big ones. And it is a touchdown for the quarterback, Green. Cornelius Green, the sophomore, is over. And Ohio State goes back in the lead. Well, it looked like the typical play. They thought it was going to go to this man. What a fake. Beautiful, Cornelius. There's that hole, Al. Sure was. Let's see it again. Watch this fake. This is real faking. Look at him. Slip it in and take it out of the belly of Pete Johnson and scamper over for the score. How about from the ground? On the ground here, you're watching three sophomores and a freshman right now in that Ohio State backfield. Now, what do they do? They lead 26-21. And they're going to go for two. I like this two-point play. Bruce Elia is the fullback. Flag has been dropped. And to bring him back five yards. Well, now a change of strategy. This puts the ball on the eight-yard line. And Blair Conway comes in. Holding will be Bashnagel. And another flag goes down. That's offside against USC. Offside against USC. I think it was Sims offside. Now they're calling the uh, captain over from Ohio State. And they want to talk to their coach. They say, hold up. All right, the offside penalty is declined. They take the extra point on the successful conversion kick. So, it's Ohio State, 27, USC, 21. Two minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third period. It is down to the one-yard line. Alan Carter has it. Carter is held within the 20. That's what every successful kickoff team likes to do, contain the receiving team within the 20 and make them start off with poor field position. Bruce Rule and Steve Luke went down to cover the kickoff. And you keep thinking, 43 points all year. USC has 21 already against a super defensive team, playing a different type defense today, but just executing perfectly. Listen to these offensive figures. I'll give them to you in just a moment. Davis at tailback, Ward fullback, Pat Hayden. But Swan in motion. Hayden slips the ball off. And Davis is to the 26-yard line, where Jim Cope, the right end, Bradishar are in on the play. So it's second down and three to go. USC on their 26. McNeil back at his tailback. USC today has 306 yards total offense. Ohio State has 316 yards. Both teams are over 300 yards in total offense. Second down three for the Trojans. Hayden, the rod the tailback. He's to the 29-yard line, very close to the first down. And the Cree, number 88, the end, made the stop for Ohio State, and they're going to measure. Now in there at left defensive tackle, coming out, Nick Bonamici. He was in there briefly for 42, Arnold Jones. Short, Hayden says to his coach McKay, here's a rerun with featuring Lynn Swan, the flanker back. That's against Fox, Curry. A lot of interesting things happen. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> it looks like <laughs> one of the great wrestling matches of the century. <laughs> yeah, great foothold by Tim, uh, <laughs> against Tim Fox. Fox and the Hounds. Third down and a foot to go. The quarterback sneak by Pat Hayden. He has the first down. 
U.S. needs ball. Along their 30-yard line. The score is 27-21, Ohio State. One minute to play in the third quarter. McNeil back in his tailback. And really the one big thing we haven't seen is the bl blistering speed of Lynn Swan deep. They're playing him deep. They're playing him very cautious. But he can fly. Now they're back in the regular step with McNeil going in motion. Hayden goes on the run. And some of the Buckeye fans are saying he intentionally grounded that pass. The college rule is you very rarely see a call for intentionally grounding unless he just spikes the ball almost at his feet. But if there's no one in the area where he throws the ball, it's intentionally grounding. But there were a couple of red-shirted Buckeyes over that way. Van Decree was in there after him, chasing him. There are the first downs. But it's on a scoreboard that counts, and Ohio State has a 27-21 lead. USC's ball on her 30-yard line, second and 10. Davis again, the tailback. Ken Kuhn has come in as middle linebacker, replacing Cagle for Ohio State. This pass is to Manfred Moore, and he's hit by Steve Luke. Really belted him there. Manfred Moore coming out of the back. He caught 16 passes during the regular season. You know, on the far side, they booed a moment ago Van Decree, but he's playing that spot extremely well. As I mentioned earlier, not too big. 6'1", 215, but he's playing it rather loose. He's going to have a difficult time getting out to that side. It's going to be very difficult to try to screen against him. All right, we have a third down and five. Your Ohio State fans will have the Cree next year. There's the end of the third period. And what a Rose Bowl we're having here. We start 1974, Ohio State 27, USC 21. End of the fourth period here in Pasadena's Rose Bowl. Over 105,000 fans today. Traveler 2 and Tommy Trojan. Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis, USC's ball, third and five under 35. Aiden's top. Goes to J.K. McKay. He catches the ball and he's 38. He's short of a first down. Somebody asked him how it felt to play for the... He's hurt, his knee. How it felt to play for his father, the coach. Because my father doesn't coach the players, he coaches the coaches. J.K. McKay was hurt when he came down, hit up in the air. And now you're going to have an anxious father over in the sideline, not just the player, but his son is injured. John McKay is the kind of man, though, Kurt, as we both know that everyone on that field is treated like his son. Now it's a punting situation. Jim Lucas to punt, and Neil Colsey's back. He ran one back 57 yards the last time to set up the go-ahead touchdown for Ohio State. Here's a low kick right at him. Bad kick for a return. Colsey is covered this time, and he stopped on his 36-yard line. USC got away with that line drive punt. Leading ball carrier in this game for Ohio State's their freshman, Pete Johnson, 86 yards. Archie Griffin has 71. Anthony Davis has 69 yards for USC. And now you're playing Woody Hayes' football game. He's ahead of you. He'll like to grind it out. He wants to eat up the clock. He has that big freshman in there, Johnson. Ripping the tail back. Cornelius Green waiting for the snap. Green's going to pass. Maybe. He's an escape artist. Look at him. 40. 43 yard line. He can really stay on his feet. Ed Powell. The left linebacker brought him down after about four shots at him. Well, that's not Woody Hayes' kind of football, Kurt. Looks like you're going to eat up the clock. First down, he's going to pass. What's happened to Coach Hayes? That cloud of dust isn't here today. Well, as he says, he's mellowed. He's been all yeah. sweetness and light out here for the last 10 days for these history quotes. Second down, two. Johnson, the fullback, just made it to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Art Riley and Monty Doris spending there. Riley, the right tackle, number 70. Third and two now for Ohio State on their 43-yard line. The 
passing has been important for Ohio State. They've been kidding the Ohio State passing attack, but they've hit five out of seven and have set up two of their touchdowns today. So early in the fourth period, third and two. They run Archie Griffin, and he is stopped short of a first down. Ed Powell, Charles Anthony. Ed Anthony's been outstanding today, number 55, senior, and Art Riley, number 70. All right, here's the punting team on for Ohio State. And suddenly, both defenses start to stiffen up. Now, here's the kid that made his first appearance in a varsity game in the first half of one punt. He's replaced the star punter of Ohio State, Spadini, who fractured his ankle. So here's his second punt of his varsity career. And it's not a bad punt. Coming to the 21-yard line to Anthony Davis. Davis is really smashed down at his 28. And while they get ready for USC now to see if they can stop Ohio State again, we'll take a timeout with a score. Ohio State 27, USC. Fred Sanford wants to know if a 165-pound dummy really is his son. Find out when Red Fox and Desmond Wilson star as Sanford and Son starting Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hayden throwing. No good. To J.K. McKay, who is all right. No knee injury. Back in the game. He has caught four passes today. Lynn Swan has caught four. Pugich has caught four for Ohio State for 90 yards. All right, second down 10, USC on their 28. Now suddenly both offenses starting to sort of flame out, Al. That's right, Kurt. The strategy's a little different right now. They're sputtering. Let's see if they can get him going. He has a draw play to Rob McNeil, and he's to the 33 of USC. Randy Gratishar, who is an outstanding student, 3.2 average at Ohio State. Incidentally, in Houston, the Rotar Rotarians of Houston have an annual banquet and award the Vince Lombardi Trophy to the outstanding lineman. Two players in the Rose Bowl will be there among the four finalists, Gratishar, John Hicks, Bill Wyman of Texas, and Lucius Selman of Oklahoma. The two out of the four on this field today made it to the finals. Eight, nine of green to Anthony Davis is no good. And now the punt team comes on for USC. For the fourth and 10. This year marks the first time that the AFC Championship game, the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl have been seen live in our three Alaskan affiliates, live not delayed by film or tape. Hello, Alaska. Lucas kick. Lucas kick. Gets an Ohio State bounce and then bringing the ball back up to the 47-yard line is Doug Plank, number 28. Ohio State now has good operating position. They're ahead, 27-21. 12 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the 60th Rose Bowl game with a timeout, and there's your score. Look at that shot, the sun kissing the top of the San Gabriel Mountains. Ohio State's ball, first down, Cornelius Green fires that pass, again he hits it. Our team is Parker, Josh Nagel had the hit made on him, and Green is now six out of eight in the game. They said he couldn't pass. First down, Ohio State. Most passes caught this year by Ohio State, Kurt, was six. The most attempted all year against TCU was 12. Green gives the ball off to Archie Griffin. He's ridden down at the line of scrimmage for no gain by James Sims, number 41, and Charlie Phillips, 49. Good hole by Tim, uh, well, against Tim Fox. Fox and the Hounds. Third down and a foot to go. The quarterback sneak by Pat Hayden. He has the first down. USC's ball along their 30-yard line. The score is 
27-21, Ohio State. One minute to play in the third quarter. McNeil back in his tailback. And really the one big thing we haven't seen is the bl blistering speed of Lynn Swan deep. They're playing him deep. They're playing him very cautious, but he can fly. Now they're back in the regular step with McNeil going in motion. Hayden goes on the run. And some of the Buckeye fans are saying he intentionally grounded that pass. The college rule is you very rarely see a call for intentionally grounding unless he just spikes the ball almost at his feet. But if there's no one in the area where he throws the ball, it's intentionally grounding. But there were a couple of red-shirted Buckeyes over that way. Van Decree was in there after him, chasing him. There are the first downs. But it's on the scoreboard that counts, and Ohio State has a 27-21 lead. USC's ball on her 30-yard line, second and 10. Davis again the tailback. Ken Kuhn has come in as middle linebacker, replacing Cagle for Ohio State. This pass is to Manfred Moore, and he's hit by Steve Luke. Really belted him there. Manfred Moore coming out of the backfield. He caught 16 passes during the regular season. You know, on the far side, they booed a moment ago Van Decree, but he's playing that spot extremely well. As I mentioned earlier, not too big. 6'1", 215, but he's playing it rather loose. He's going to have a difficult time getting out to that side. It's going to be very difficult to try to screen against him. All right, we have a third down and five. You Ohio State fans will have the Cree next year. There's the end of the third period. And what a Rose Bowl we're having here. We start 1974, Ohio State 27, USC 21. Fourth period here in Pasadena's Rose Bowl. Over 105,000 fans today. Traveler 2 and Tommy Trojan. Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis, USC's ball, third and five under 35. Aiden's top. Goes to J.K. McKay. He catches the ball on his 38. He's short of a first down. Somebody asked him how it felt to play for the... He's hurt, his knee. How it felt to play for his father, the coach. Because my father doesn't coach the players, he coaches the coaches. J.K. McKay was hurt when he came down, hit up in the air. And now you're going to have an anxious father over in the sideline, not just the player, but his son is injured. John McKay's the kind of man, though, Kurt, as we both know, that everyone on that field is treated like his son. Now it's a punting situation. Jim Lucas to punt, and Neil Colsey's back. He ran one back 57 yards the last time to set up the go-ahead touchdown for Ohio State. Here's a low kick right at him. Bad kick for a return. Colsey is covered this time, and he stopped at his 36-yard line. USC got away with that line drive punt. Leading ball carrier in this game for Ohio State's their freshman, Pete Johnson, 86 yards. Archie Griffin has 71. Anthony Davis has 69 yards for USC. And now you're playing Woody Hayes' football game. He's ahead of you. He'll like to grind it out. He wants to eat up the clock. He has that big freshman in there, Johnson. Ripping the tail back. Cornelius Green waiting for the snap. Green's going to pass. Maybe. He's an escape artist. Look at him. 40. 43 yard line. He can really stay on his feet. Ed Powell. The left linebacker brought him down after about four shots at him. Well, that's not Woody Hayes' kind of football, Kurt. Looks like you're going to eat up the clock. First down, he's going to pass. What's happened to Coach Hayes? That cloud of dust isn't here today. Well, as he says, he's mellowed. He's been all yeah. sweetness and light out here for the last 10 days for these history quotes. Second down, two. Johnson, the fullback, just made it to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Art Riley and Monty Doris spending there. Riley, the right tackle, number 70. Third and two now for Ohio State on their 43-yard line. The passing has been important for Ohio State. They've been kidding 
the Ohio State passing attack, but they've hit five out of seven and set up two of their touchdowns today. So early in the fourth period, third and two. They run Archie Griffin, and he is stopped short of a first down. Ed Powell, Charles Anthony. Ed Anthony's been outstanding today, number 55, senior, and Art Riley, number 70. All right, here's the punting team on for Ohio State. And suddenly, both defenses start to stiffen up. Now, here's the kid that made his first appearance in a varsity game in the first half with one punt. He's replaced the star punter of Ohio State, Spadini, who fractured his ankle. So here's his second punt of his varsity career. And it's not a bad punt. Coming to the 21-yard line to Anthony Davis. Davis is really smashed down at his 28. And while they get ready for USC now to see if they can stop Ohio State again, we'll take a timeout with a score. Ohio State 27, USC. Fred Sanford wants to know if a 165-pound dummy really is his son. Find out when Red Fox and Desmond Wilson star as Sanford and Son starting Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hayden throwing. No good to J.K. McKay, who is all right. No knee injury back in the game. He has caught four passes today. Lynn Swan has caught four. Pugich has caught four for Ohio State for 90 yards. All right, second down 10, USC on their 28. Now suddenly both offenses starting to sort of flame out, Al. That's right, Kurt. The strategy's a little different right now. They're sputtering. Let's see if they can get him going. He has a draw play to Rob McNeil. And he's to the 33 of USC. Randy Gratishar, who is an outstanding student. 3.2 average at Ohio State. Incidentally, in Houston, the Rotar Rotarians of Houston have an annual banquet and award the Vince Lombardi Trophy to the outstanding lineman. Two players in the Rose Bowl will be there among the four finalists, Gratishar, John Hicks, Bill Wyman of Texas, and Lucius Selman of Oklahoma. The two out of the four on this field today have made it to the finals. Eight, nine of green. To Anthony Davis is no good. And now the punt team comes on for USC. And the fourth and ten. This year marks the first time that the AFC Championship game, the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl, have been seen live on our three Alaskan affiliates. Live. Not delayed by film or tape. Hello, Alaska. Lucas kick. Lucas kick. Gets an Ohio State bounce and then bringing the ball back up to the 47 yard line is Doug Plank, number 28. Ohio State now has good operating position. They're ahead 27 21. 12 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the 60th Rose Bowl game with a timeout, and there's your score. Look at that shot, the sun kissing the top of the San Gabriel Mountains. Ohio State's ball, first down. Cornelius Green fires that pass. Again, he hits it. Artemis Parker, the Bashnagel, had the hit made on him. And Green is now six out of eight in the game. And they said he couldn't pass. First down, Ohio State. Most passes caught this year by Ohio State, Kurt, was six. The most attempted all year against TCU was 12. Green gives the ball off to Archie Griffin. He's ridden down at the line of scrimmage for no gain by James Sims, number 41, and Charlie Phillips, 49. Richard Wood sort of trailed the play late. There's Sims, senior from Los Angeles. Second down, 10 for Ohio State. Healy is the fullback now for the Buckeyes. And the 25-yard pass from Green to Bash Nagel. There's Elia, good blocker. Griffin, gaping hole, 
He's on his way. And they stop him on the three. Archie Griffin. Well, Kurt, you said Ely is a good blocker. Bruce Ely. All right, he leads us into the hole. This is Ohio State football at its very best. Ilya makes a fine block. Breaks the man loose. Got to be awfully close to the 100 if not over it. And he is injured on this play as you look again at a different angle on the rerun. Here comes Ilya. We told him he's a good blocker. He lowers the boom on Anthony. Now Griffin, once he accelerates, goes right by you. Parker's waiting for him, number 14. He faked him out. Didn't look like much of a move, but he really fooled him. Now watch him as he's injured here when he hits the ground. And when we come back to live action here, you're going to see him still on the ground. Marvin Cobb got him back. Now he's up. He's up. And he comes off the field. And today, he has 97 yards. He's just a sophomore. He's going to become the all-time great runner of Ohio State history, probably exceeding Hopalong Cassidy and Vic Janet. Two more years to go. He's getting better every game. Elmer Lippert replaces him number 47. He has broken the all-time rushing record in one season of any Big Ten back. Eric the Flea Allen of Michigan State, gold record. Bruce Elia carried that ball, stopped at the three-yard line. Second down, three to go for an Ohio State touchdown. Biggest defensive opportunity and the greatest offensive opportunity of the game. Against this team, if they get ahead by two touchdowns, they can be murdered. Second down, three for Ohio State. Three for a touchdown. Ohio State leading 27 to 21. Watch his blocking up front. That's a murderous offensive line they have. They've had some holes down at this goal line you wouldn't believe. Pete Johnson scored three touchdowns. Elia won now. They're going for two. Green keeps the ball and makes it. Cornelius Green has it. And Ohio State now leads by 14. Timeout, Ohio State. 35, USC, 21. Ohio State will kick off. There's their drive. I'll have to say one thing. I will get to it later. Here's the kick now by Conway. Coming to Alex Carter on the six-yard line. And he's hit by number 84. For Ohio State, and that is Robert Budzinski. And Woody Hayes just pours him in there. A much maligned passing attack of Ohio State has been the story of this game. They have thrown just enough to open up USC and make the run more effective. Cornelius Green has attempted eight passes that hit six of them, and some of them have been big ones, 20, 30, and 40-yard passes which has really made USC think on defense. First down, USC under 22. Now Hayden, slipping as he sets up, overthrows J.K. McKay. Two or four times Hayden has slipped as he set up. That's right. Now Ohio State really has the Trojans where they want them. They want them to throw the football. They will not use too much time doing it. Ohio State knows they can move the football. If, if uh, Hayden is going to throw it well, Kurt, He's going to have to, again, try the short areas over the middle. They're taking away the outside. This defense, by the way, has just worked beautifully. Second down, 10. USC now trailing by 14 points. Aiden comes up out of the pocket. He's under pressure. Goes on the run. And it's a great grab by Lynn Swan. And what a pass by Pat Hayden for a right-hander to run left. And then, as you're running left, jump and throw. That takes some ability. Southern Cal has a first down. 
We have a, a player injured for Ohio State. Neil Colsey's coming out. Watch your right hand or go left. Very difficult pass, right, Al? Boy, it sure is. He's got that poise that we've seen frequently that makes for a great quarterback. Constantly watching that secondary, throwing on the move. Look at that jump. Can oh. he get up there? And he jumped. Southern Cows ball first down on her own 39. 10 minutes, 14 seconds to go in the Rose Bowl game. That's Palsy who was injured. He returned to punt 57, a big play of this game. Anthony Davis hit at the 44 of Southern Cal by Tim Fox, who's been a stick out on defense today for Ohio State. Number 12, and he's down. That was Fox's 10th tackle. That was a big one. He made a big tackle there because Davis had a full head of steam up. There was a good block by Manfred Moore. Davis cut back and going full tilt hits him five. Anthony Davis has 74 yards on the ground. The top ground gainer, Archie Griffith with 97. He was shaken up, taken out. He hasn't been back in. The freshman, Pete Johnson, has 86 yards for the Buckeyes and three touchdowns today. A freshman with three Rose Bowl touchdowns. Jerome Davis, number 29, is going to replace Neil Colsey as the open field cornerback. Here's Anthony Davis. He thought he was going somewhere. Uh, where did that man Fox come from? I thought I was on my way. <laughs> this is a football. Wait a minute, coach, you're going too fast. <laughs> Tim Fox is out now. Uh, you've got two key men out of that Ohio State secondary, Colsey and Fox. You've got Lynn Swan on the other side and J.K. McKay. Now Colsey's back in again. They just sent him back in. All right, Hayden throws the swing. Out to Davis. Davis has the first down after the juggling catch, and Neil Colsey's over there to drive him out. Number 20. And that's a USC first down. And now the tempo's picking up. You see a difference. You see the way these men are coming off the ball. Anthony Davis, who has not caught well, flew out of that backfield. The tempo's picked up. They know they've just about got the score here. Now Pat Hayden has put the ball up 29 times today and hit 15. His seasonal percentage, 56% of his passes attempted were completed. McNeil in motion, and for more to the 45 of Ohio State. You know, as hard as they're hitting now, and as fired up as both teams were, it's remarkable they're playing with so few mistakes. It's an extremely well-played, hard-fought, very clean football game. That little incident with Decree really it was just a matter of a man being so high. But other than that, beautifully coached, representing two great states very well. Nine minutes to go in the Rose Bowl. 35-21, Ohio State. Aiden on second down. Swings it to Davis. Incomplete. Third down, seven. Stay tuned right after this game. We'll switch to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Penn State, and LSU. And John Capaletti, the Heisman Trophy winner, performing in that game. We haven't heard much, really. The tight end on the opposition has done well. But it's been Obradovich, really, who's done so well for USC. The tight end, Hayden, has not used him that much today. And Neil back in a tailback. Kuhn is now the middle linebacker replacing Cagle. Third and seven for USC. Forty-five, forty. He's short of a first down. He stopped on the thirty-nine of Ohio State, and he's hit there. Let's see as they look to that sideline. They almost have to go for it, fourth and a yard, and trailing by fourteen. Fourth down and a long yard to go. Rod McNeil is in the football game as he carried deep secondary. All 
side. Here we go. Fourth and a yard. And he's going to pass for it. His pass broken up. Wide down on Posey. Neil Posey reaching over and hooking Lynn Swan for pass interference. First down, USC. And both teams are going right at the heart, the strength of it. That is Bradishaw being blocked. Ball over the top. Total yards in this game now. Ohio State 378, USC 362. And the score, 35-21 Ohio State. Southern Cal on the Ohio State 29-yard line with a first down. Big rush on him. Dumps it off to Neal. Just got rid of that ball in time. Caught at the 25. Colsey made the tackle. And the heat was put in there by Ken Kuhn, who was blitzing from the middle linebacck position, number 54. The four-yard gain, second down six for USC. We'll try to get a look at Jim Obradovich. He's number 89. We're trying to figure out why is it that Hayden has not been going to him. It could be the man, the linebacker, forcing him inside. Second down six. Anthony Davis, no gain. Number 32, Rick Middleton underneath. On top, Jim Cope to right end. Third and six. USC. Behind 35-21. Time moving against them. There's their third down situation. Seven minutes to play. And John McKay knows that they have to keep this drive going. Third and six. The motion. McNeil. Hayden with a rush by Coon. Getting away and now buried. I threw the ball away, but the whistle had blown him dead at the 40-yard line. Van Decree in there. Ra Randy Gratishar, but it was Decree who put it on him, and they really went after him. They were blitzing on this play. Boy, they were, and they were coming hard against a good offensive line. A big play. Heard there were a lot of arguments about who represents the Big Ten. I know. Woody Hayes was under a great deal of pressure, but we have to say this team has done just a beautiful job. There's Decree. There's Van Decree putting him down, and Pat Hayden tried to dump it off. And a timeout has been called by USC. This is a fourth and 21 coming. Pat Hayden wants a conference with his coach. 6.20 to go in the game, and NBC tells you the score is Ohio State 35, USC. This game is running long. They were supposed to come on with the Orange Bowl at 7.45 New York time. But as soon as this game's over, we'll switch to Miami, LSU against Penn State in the Orange Bowl. Now here is a 21 yards they need, and he unloads it deep. And it is into the hand of Lynn Swan and out. Rick Middleton, I think, slightly deflected it. And he was down there around the 10 or 15 yard line. Could have held on to it, it would have been a first down. Ohio State holds and takes over on their 40. Ohio State's ball. Ohio State leading 35-21. The Big Ten has lost four in a row to the Pac-8, five of the last six. And Ohio State desperately wanted this one to uphold the Big Ten prestige. Archie Griffin's back in the game and he had just gone over 100 yards. How about that for a sophomore? He's played 11 games this year, and every game he's gained at least 100 yards. Two more years to go. Bad news. Bad news for future opponents of Ohio State. Because he's getting better all the time, and he'll get bigger and stronger. On second and five, Pete Johnson, a freshman. More bad news for you future Ohio State opponent. That's, he has three more years to go. That's big bad news, I'll tell you. He is something. Well, he's sure have been terrific. There he is, Woody Hayes. Sweetness and light all week, as Kurt said earlier. But tough customer today. His team hasn't been too sweet. Not at all. 
And we have a timeout. I want to tell you that uh, although Ohio State linebacker Randy, Randy Gratishar and USC defensive lineman Bonnie Doris are not playing exactly opposite each other today, they have one very special thing in common. Each recently won a $1,000 NCAA postgraduate scholarship for his outstanding athletic and academic record. They were two of the 33 winners in 73, the 10th year of the program through which student athletes have received $657,000 for graduate study. And their accomplishments bring much to mind, such as past winners from these two schools as Ohio State's Rex Kern and USC's Steve Sawyer. Penn State's Mark Markovich will be seen in the Orange Bowl on NBC later this evening, is also another outstanding student. And I'll tell you, that's a potent combination. An athlete who has a good mind. Because they learn competitive spirit. They're very competitive people. They learn to work with other people. And along with a good mind and a fine college education, it's a tough combination of whip in the business world or whatever they go into. There's that passing stat we told you about, Cornelius Green. He gives it to Pete Johnson. He's in USC territory to the USC 47 where Charlie Phillips brought him down. I'll still hang my hat on that passing of Cornelius Green today as a key for Ohio State. Oh, it sure was. You know, you're talking about the fullback and so was I. Not only Pete Johnson, but Ilya. And in the wings, a man that Rout now ranked fifth all-time scorer, Champ Henson, who has not gotten, gotten into the game. Had a knee operation in September. He is dressed. He can play, but probably will not. Clock moving in Ohio State's favor. 4.45 to go. There's Archie Griffin again. Still on the move. 25 to the 20. He may make this. He is over. Touchdown, 40. Seven-yard run for Archie Griffin. One of seven brothers watching. All right, that's Rich Wood firing across. Here's the first angle. Again, another super block by the big fullback. That's our team that's there. Parker missing him. Watch this little move here. Little move to the inside. Can this fella run? Wow. You can't tackle him high. Now watch him. Watch the change of direction, ladies and gentlemen. One, there's his first change. Now watch him. Back again he comes. His second change. Now a little move here, and when you hit him high, he'll carry you right along. He is so strong up above. And he's really not that big. The only way he's 182 pounds. Three brothers older than he is have graduated from college. He has three coming up behind him, and they say two of them are better than Archie Griffin. I want to see him. Now the kick was good, and the Ohio State Buckeyes are rolling now. They've all been wrapped up in the 60th Rose Bowl affair. They're leading 42 to 21. Archie Griffin today has now made 149 yards on the ground. The only common opponent they both had was Washington State. Washington State got 35 points against USC. They got exactly three against the Buckeyes. A sophomore and a freshman. And a sophomore. Green's a sophomore. Griffin's a sophomore. Johnson's a freshman. And Bashnagel's a sophomore. What a backfield on that field today for Ohio State. And they're just youngsters. This kick taken by Alan Carter. Carter brings it up to the 36. Ohio State wanted revenge today for the shellacking they received last year by USC. And also, as I told you, they're trying to stop that lost streak that the Big Ten's had against the Pack 8. Jerome Davis made that tackle. Ohio State is moved for 438 yards in this game. The all-time record, Iowa's, 516 yards. Hayden shoots that ball to Hay, and it's a first down, USC, on the Ohio State 44. Al, Forrest Nevesheski's Iowa team back in 59 made 516 yards, an all-time Rose Bowl record. Today, Ohio State has 438 yards. 
Well, they've proven so much to us. USC losing one, tying a tremendous Oklahoma team 7-7 and being taken apart now. He dumps it off to Manfred Moore. Moore stop. Well, I don't know, Oklahoma, you know, Notre Dame winning that spectacular game last night, Alabama. I imagine a lot of Buckeyes would like to see Ohio State play anyone. I wouldn't mind seeing Ohio State play anyone, I'll tell you. Of course, the governor of Oklahoma has been here for the Rose Bowl. Yes. His team couldn't go anywhere this year. He decided to come to the Rose Bowl. Governor Hall. Ken Gray is now the fullback. And this is a broken play. Hayden is diving ahead. I don't believe he had the ball securely when he took the snap. Timeout called by USC. And they have one more timeout. Three minutes and 19 seconds remaining. Kurt, you told me before I ever did a Rose Bowl game that this has got to be one of the most impressive sights you'll ever see. Right now, it is magnificent. The lights are on, the mountains in the background, the sun is setting. What a beautiful spot in Pasadena. Remember the Orange Bowl coming up. You won't miss any of the action. You'll see the Penn State LSU game in its completion. And we'll be signing right off here and moving to Miami, Florida. You know, this is a lovely sight right now with the lights on. And the darkness starting to settle in. And one of these red skies, red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red in the morning, sailors take warning. But it's a beautiful view here. All kinds of colors, red and purples, San Gabriel Mountains in the background. Look at that. And 106,000 people watching the end of the Rose Bowl game. USC, first down, 33-yard line of Ohio State. Matt Hayden, being chased down. That's the third back. Van Decree has him, 88. Van Decree, boy, did he come to play football today, and he has been a big factor. We said early they threw a different defense at him. He's quick. Beats the block there. He's been brilliant today on defense. Not too popular with USC fans, but Ohio State will take him. That play lost back to the 45. It's second down now. And 22 yards to go. 45 or 42 21, Ohio State. They've rolled in the fourth period, setting up a screen to Moore. Moore brought down on the 40 by Vic Cagle, number 62, the middle linebacker. The Ohio State team, Al, much quicker team speed than last year. They all move well, laterally. That's right. You were talking about some of the factors, and, you know, we asked. Coach John McKay about this team before the game, and one of the things he brought up was his defense, their ability to move, and they are exactly that much quicker. And I think John McKay, he's an admirer of Woody Hayes. Hayes thinks McKay is an innovator. I think you'll see the left end move here for Southern Cal. The pass is doing for a touchdown, but I think you're going to see Obradovich move. I saw a flag go down. Obradovich's motion caught my eye. I'm sure this is going to be called back. He jumped the gun. Watch it here. Watch it. There he goes. That's him. He beats the snap, and he wipes out a touchdown for USC. Dennis Benition and Joe Costanza have been our aides here in the booth today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And our good friend, Dr. Bob Woods. He's the, of all the physicians in the Los Angeles area, Mr. Sports, Dr. Bob Woods. He just does it for the love of it. And Zane Radney is our production stage manager. Hayden unloads a deep one. Well covered, though, incomplete. Meant for Lynn Swan. They fairly effectively bottled Lynn Swan today, Al. Yes, they have. That deep zone, we've seen it all year. It's hard to throw deep against it. Right now, he's forced to throw deep against it. 
you're just not going to beat it. You've got to come short, and so Ohio State says, okay, that's what we'll give you. But he's not taking it. You had a senior there, Lynn Swan, covered by two freshmen, Bruce Rule and Jerome Davis. That Swan undoubtedly will go in the number one round of the pro picks. He has everything to look for as a wide receiver. Fleet of foot, the hands, the jumping ability, the athletic competitiveness. Here's a fourth down play. Hayden down the middle. It's J.K. McKay, and it's the first down for USC. J.K. McKay has now caught six passes. The coach's son. We're going to pause briefly for identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Pat Hayden, 20 out of 38, 189 yards. A gifted passer. He'll be back next year. The throw, com complete and lost. And it's Ohio State's ball, I think. Shelton Diggs caught the ball. He had control and lost the ball. Randy Gratishar hopped on it. Ohio State ball. The player of the game has been voted to Cornelius Green. Well, that'd be a hard choice in Ohio State. Cornelius yeah. Green or Archie Griffin? It sure would be. They both played well. That passing is what was so important, but Griffin had a great day. You know, the way he's running, Kurt, he's got to be terribly tired with one minute and ten to go. You wouldn't be really too surprised if he breaks this all the way. The orange ball coming up next. You'll see it in its entirety. LSU, Penn State, Archie Griffin gets a hand. The sophomore and his teammate, Cornelius Green, another sophomore, has been voted the player of the game. Last year was Sam Cunningham, Sam the Bam for USC. First down, Ohio State under five. They give it to Bruce Elia, the fullback. And if he wants to go back to linebacker, I think you'll see him there next year with Pete Johnson coming up behind him, the freshman who rambled today for three touchdowns and 94 yards, Pete Johnson. Just starting to learn what it's all about. Ohio State has it wrapped up, 42-21. 40 seconds to go. There's Ilya again. Ilya is brought down by Gene Mardarian. Ohio State taking a lengthy huddle. We hope you've enjoyed the game today. It was going right down to a tight one to the middle of the fourth quarter when Ohio State broke it open. That's the time remaining. Ilya carries for a first down. They're just eating it away. A happy band of Ohio State fans. Their team has the revenge that they wanted and they stopped the Pacific 8 winning streak. The Big Ten is going to be the winner today. Four seconds to go. And the Big Ten has come back. And the much discussed selection of Ohio State to come out here. Ohio State has come through for the Big Ten athletic directors today. That's right. When you think about, when you think about last year and that overwhelming defeat, 42. There it is. That's 17 the final score. And, reversed it. and Ohio State has won it. 42 to 21. And so Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis bid you goodbye. A very happy new year from the Rose Bowl on NBC, number one in live coverage of sports the year round. And now we switch you to the Orange Bowl. Stay tuned after station identification for the Orange Bowl game.